Welcome everyone to our ADR webinar today. Um, the presenter of today will be my dear colleague, Steve Collins, um, Senior Account Manager, and my name is Kakit, and I'll be your host today. Uh, before I pass the word to Steve, um, a real quick introduction to our company profile. So Mac was founded in 1923 uh, and started off as an SME. And today, Mac is still a family-owned uh, growing company. Uh, the past years, we have uh, realized a firm and sustainable growth, uh, and that is reflected only um, in the increase of employees that we have uh, over time, but also uh, an average of 18% of year-over-year -year growth, uh, and that for the past four years. So cur currently, we have uh, 130 uh, engineers, software and hardware engineers. Uh, on the map on the Mac payroll, uh, and this year's expected revenue uh, will be around 20 million euros. Uh, another important business aspect is that originally the main income stream was generated from local clients in Belgium, but um, throughout the years we build up a, a proven track record. But more, most importantly, also confidence uh, in our expertise, and that resulted uh, in a solid and also a mature turnkey solution that we offered today. So hence, we decided to scale up our business activities on an international level uh, through all kinds of partnerships. So uh, we are proud today to say that uh, we have sales across um, all continents, Germany, France, uh, the UK, Brazil, Turkey, Vietnam, Morocco, and so on and so on. Um, most of you uh, know Mac um, through our smart cameras uh, with deep learning capabilities, but some of you might not know that um, we also offer a very powerful uh, and modular back office called uh, MQ, uh, the Mac Mobility Manager. Um, and this will also be uh, more in depth presented by my colleague later on. Anyway, um, the topic of today will be the transportation of dangerous goods. Uh, and after presentation, we will have a, a small Q&A session. So feel free to post your questions in the chat box below. Uh, and we will answer them um, in the end of the webinar. Thank you. Uh, Steve, the mic is yours. Uh, Steve, you're still muted. <laughs> Steve, you're still muted. Yeah, hi everybody. I hope you can hear me today. Uh, thank you very much for coming in to listen. Uh, this is a subject that's very dear to me. It's something that uh, I've always wanted to follow because I've been working in tunnels now for the past 30 years. And I could always see that uh, this was a major headache for a lot of the motorway and tunnel operators, not being able to know exactly what was inside the tunnel at the time where an incident might be, uh, might happen. So uh, as you're probably aware, uh, the ADR uh, legislation is now, well, I think it's quite, a, it's quite as old as me, 1957. And uh, you can see that um, it's evolved tremendously over the last years. Every single chemical product is now classified. And uh, while there has been, uh, there's been a great move to the legislation to make sure that um, uh, that uh, all the orange plates that you see now on trucks, back in front of trucks, now indicate the, the chemical substance that's being carried by the truck. Um, one thing that needs to be said here is that, and that's a major breakthrough for the technology as I see it today, is that um, there are a lot of uh, empty ADR orange plates on front and back of trucks. Uh, these are used when the truck is carrying several dis different types of substance. And um, also you can see if you go down, if you go shopping to the hypermarket, and you see the gas bottle truck coming in to deliver, you'll see that he's, he has an empty plate in the front of the truck, like the one you can see in this photo here. 
Um, and the truck is just telling us that there is a mix of substances in there and that the, the truck is dangerous. Um, I think uh, the most important challenge, therefore, is to be able to detect not only the number plate and classify the chemical substance, but also say that there is a dangerous goods truck in there, even if we don't know what chemical substance is being carried. Um, Ah, I have I've lost the control over the screen. Try again. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Ah, try again. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, sorry about that, guys. So um, you can see that there are two levels of number plate that need to be read. Uh, one of them obviously gives the hazard identification number, which has been uh, thoroughly organized, defined, and everything else over the past 25 years. And the other uh, one below gives the actual substance identification number. So you can see on the left-hand side that any truck carrying whatever liquid is clearly defined. And on the right-hand side there, I've shown a photo of um, one of those gas bottle trucks where you're not quite sure what's in there, but you know it's carrying dangerous goods. So from a technology aspect and from a technology standpoint, you need to be able to detect that empty plate instead of being able to detect characters, just to make sure that you actually detect the vehicle carrying chemical substances. You can see on the truck here, it's quite visible. Um, normally the legislation says that it has to be installed between midway to the bottom of the truck. A lot of people put it down in the middle there, as you can see. Some of the people put it on the right-hand side or on the left-hand side of the number plates. So it makes it quite difficult for the technology to be able to pick that up. And as you can see in the back of the truck, there are different products there. Um, so they're not capable of defining one substance. So you need to be able to detect that number plate. Um, again, the legislation is going even further now. You can see that not only do, can you have an empty plate on the back of the vehicle, you can also have plates on the side of the vehicle and on the front of the vehicle. And again, uh, another thing that uh, tunnel operators see today and the motorway operators is that there are more and more trucks here with like hidden goods inside the vehicle. And as you can see, it's still a hazardous truck. So you have to be able to pick that up at the same time. Um, again, sorry. go back. Yeah. Um, another <clears throat> difficult um, substance to be able to detect, of course, is the radioactive. Um, people know that there are trucks driving across Europe every day, 24 hours a day, carrying radioactive uh, waste. Uh, this type of waste is also mixed. It's not necessarily the same type of waste. And so it is only submitted to the empty orange plate today and still needs to be detected. So how can we do that? Um, and what type of technology are we going to use to be able to, uh, to detect the, the chemical products? Um, we have our camera, which is now referred to as the QCAM5. We have a new uh, range of products with a new uh, set of names. You will probably hear uh, more and more about QCAM3, QCAM5, QCAM7. Here we are using a QCAM5, which is able to detect um, trucks, ADR heavy goods vehicles. Um, we can identify, as you probably saw, the substance chemical protect the empty orange ADR plates. We have the make and model recognition on board the camera, and we are doing the ADR detection on two lanes. It is possible to be able to carry out, of course, average speed between two cameras to do the origin destination on the truck, uh, to detect travel time, journey time, what you would ever refer to it. And um, what we also see is now black and white list management. Um, some uh, products are blacklisted to be able to go into tunnels. And so it is possible to put those types of products onto, onto the blacklist. 
you can also see that we do, would you believe, automatic number plate recognition. The logo on the bottom right hand side you'll see later on, that's what we're using today to show that we are uh, doing the ADR detection. The camera QCAM 5 is a five megapixel camera. It's being used to detect speeds up to 300 kilometers per hour. It weighs in at four kilos. You can see it's low power consumption. It's using uh, Jetson NVIDIA motherboard, which gives us many mm, technical capabilities uh, where all the deep learning and the algorithms are embedded. Um, it has an operating temperature of minus 20 to plus 60, it's IP67. And if you look at uh, the back of the camera, just behind there, you can see uh, that it does house also a motorized arm to be able to remotely position the camera just in case. Um, the camera is actually split up as you look at it. You can see it has the main housing with the two uh, color and black and white uh, cameras inside there. And there you can see the motorized arm, which is just behind the camera with a fixture that goes onto a pole or onto a gantry. And you can see it's very well protected. Um, as we look at it, we see that there is a tendency to be able to detect more and more of this type of truck uh, going into tunnels. I don't know if you've seen some of the statistics that have been published uh, last year, but uh, Quite a few trucks were stuck inside tunnels in dangerous situations. So people are really asking that we are able to detect uh, this type of plate before and after vehicle uh, courses inside the tunnel. If we look at the configuration tool here, you can see uh, here I'm actually using the, the configuration tool to be able to look at what's happening on the CAM5. On the right hand side, we have the confidence level of the number plate recognition. On the left-hand side, we're looking, here we're looking at three lanes, counting vehicles, measuring speeds on three lanes. But from the ADR point of view, we are looking at the two lanes and you can see the ADR truck uh, slowly approaching inside the configuration tool. This uh, tool also helps us to confirm the category of vehicle. You can see there, you've got the ADR truck coming down the slow lane and we can extract the image a color image or a black and white image of each vehicle as it goes through. Yeah, it's, yeah, okay. So here um, you can see on the left hand side the truck, and on the right hand side you see the quality of image in real bad weather, heavy rain, and you will see that we have a natural, normal black and white stream here that we can stream back to the control center. We could also stream in color if necessary. The reason I've used the black and white image is because that's where we're actually doing the image processing for the number plate. So you can see the left-hand side vehicle and the vehicle inside the, uh, the video uh, stream is in fact the same. Again, a lot of uh, trucks now on the motorway with dangerous goods, carrying dangerous goods, most people don't even understand what they're carrying. So it is good to be able to refer back to a tool which defines and uh, keeps the operator constantly aware of what is on the motorway. Uh, you can see also nighttime images with the infrared capability, looking at those empty orange plates there. Night vision is constantly improving. And um, if we look onto the next slide, we can actually see that in the protocol then we have a truck with um, an empty orange number plate that's been detected, which can be seen quite nicely with the infrared capability that is embedded inside the camera. Um, so that's to do with the night vision. All of this uh, information, of course, needs to be retrieved, needs to be pushed towards a higher level of software. And the software package that we are now uh, presenting called MQ, uh, Mac Mobility Manager, uh, can be used in the cloud or on a local server. And it can be used to save all the data. It can also be dedicated completely to the ADR application, which is the case in several areas. The Mac Mobility Manager now has uh, quite a few modules, as you can see. 
uh, from overtaking to red light runner to low emission zones, um, illicit traffic. And you can see in the middle there, the dangerous goods module. Um, also average speed, vehicle tracking. If you want to do a query on a dangerous goods truck, then of course, all you have to do is go to the vehicle tracking module. Then you have the blacklist management, management and uh, also there are other types of modules that can be used as part of Mac Mobility. The, the smart platform, um, of course, we give direct access. This, uh, is, this software is sold uh, as a service. Um, it is uh, designed to make sure that every operator and every user knows in real time what type of truck and what type of chemical substance it's carrying. Um, we have a very fast query search tool that enables you to look quite quickly for any type of chemical product or the truck that you're searching for in the, in the software. Uh, one of the most interesting things is the actual data and analytics that we have now, now capable of providing. And as I said, uh, this software can either be um, cloud-based or it can be based in-house. In So if we just go into the software platform in a bit more detail, uh, some of the trucks I showed you there earlier on using the deep learning um, algorithms, um, you can see that on the left-hand side, we can see that we detected a plate at such and such a time. And if you look down approximately four lines, you can see, of course, that we are also detecting empty plates. But of course, there is no definition of chemical substance that gets a bit on people's nerves and gives them a headache. But at least it tells them that there is, in fact, an ADR approaching or inside the tunnel. Like truck, we are capable of defining the make and model of the truck and the color. Um, we are also capable of reading the number plate of that truck. Would you believe? Well, I shouldn't forget that. And of course, we're able of we're able we're capable of detecting the the empty plate as it goes through. And a few other ideas just to give you um, the capability of the software. You can see that this is a very shady area, very dark. I'm, I'm not sure whether you can see the actual plate itself. I can only just see it myself, but it is in fact being detected as it goes underneath the CAM5, which is nicely positioned in the middle of the gantry overlooking those two lanes. Again, another one which is much more difficult to read. You can see that it blends in with the radiator at the same time. Uh, but there we clearly read the two lines of chemical substance as the truck went underneath the camera. And just a few other examples. I think that's uh, a fantastic example to show that the, the system is also capable of differentiating not only between the ADR plate, but also between other signs that might be added to the, uh, to the front of the truck, such as the A that you can see on the right-hand side. And then, of course, people are asking, well, will this work uh, as you look behind the vehicle? I'm not sure whether you can see that very well, but it works very nicely indeed. And again, we're in a very shady area and we are detecting a truck moving away from the camera. Again, same thing, very difficult to see, but there is in fact an ADR plate there, which is quite visible, uh, not really the photo. And if we look at nighttime then, and you look at how the image is enhanced via the infrared capability to look at that uh, truck, you can see that the, the, the ADR plate is very well highlighted and quite easy to detect as the truck goes underneath the camera. So what is the, the traffic manager actually looking for? And we have a, a very important module inside MQ because there is more and more demand on this side from the, the traffic management teams that want to see the statistics, the data of what is traveling, the journey times, the average speeds of vehicle, the counts of vehicle on several lanes. And as you can see here, in fact, it's a very simple graph and all it says is that there are no ADR actually running on a Saturday and Sunday, which is good news. And 
If we go into a bit more detail, uh, something that uh, I quite like myself, you can see here that um, the, the user was asking when are ADR trucks actually moving on the roads? What time do they leave? What time do they travel? And as you can see here, uh, the most ADR trucks are traveling on a Wednesday between 11.30 and I think two o'clock in the afternoon. That's where we get the most ADR. So of course, this software is quite a powerful package. It um, has the possibility of being able to filter out all different types of, uh, of, uh, of data. But um, the, the results are, they, have, they very often speak for themselves. And uh, I feel that this is an adequate tool to help uh, in terms of detection for ADR vehicles. Um, just to, to finish off, um, we have some very good references now and a lot of experience with uh, ADR detection. I'm not sure whether people are, are aware of this project. It's called the L2 Outer Ring Road. Uh, which is in fact a, um, a ring road that was built around the city centre of Marseille to alleviate traffic. And you can see there, there are several dangerous points. There are in fact 10 tunnels on this ring road. And uh, there are like two major worries for the client. One is that uh, there should be no chemical substances or dangerous trucks allowed to travel on that road. And the second one is, uh, which is even more important, is the, uh, not to let an overheight vehicle get onto that road either. So we are using a system to be able to detect the height of the vehicle, but also detect the, uh, the ADR plate. Um, what we are looking to do here, or what the client is looking to do, is to be able to, of course, to warn um, all um, anybody about the unwanted vehicle and make sure that no unwanted vehicle gets onto that road. And if we look here, um, this on the left hand side, we have the uh, west approach to Marseille. Um, so you will be able to see that we are using technology whereby we, we actually have one camera detecting on one lane. Um, that's the first barrier in to uh, the Rocad Elder, which is the outer ring road. There is another gantry a bit further down that also recontrols um, on the truck and the height. And here, if we look from the northwest, uh, you'll see the same configuration as we approach the gantry. You can also see nicely installed, very nicely positioned cameras looking for ADR plates, ADR trucks, and overheight trucks as they go into Marseille. And that's how they were installed on the gantry there. Uh, very nice installation and very performing system. So that gives you an idea of, I think, how difficult ADR detection can be, but how simple Mac has made it. Uh, with the evolving technology, with the embedded deep learning algorithms inside what we call the QCAM5, you can see that uh, the technology is winning and that we are gaining ground as we go by in terms of ADR detection. Thank you very much indeed for listening. Thank you, Steve. Um, it was a quite clear but brief presentation. Um, I'm looking into um, questions. Um, they're slow, slowly are coming in, but um, we can already start with the first question. Uh, let me have a look. They're still coming in, Steve. So it was, I think it was quite um, quite clear because not that many questions are coming in, but I'm seeing people typing. Um, so let's wait for, for another minute. Okay, I see the question, which camera brands are supported by what we've been doing in terms technologically, technologically speaking. 
Um, I would say that uh, this, these developments are fairly recent um, and um, the, the experience that we have are, are all using our own cameras. Uh, the, the camera that used to be referred to as ICAR Cam 3 and the QCAM 5 are, as far as I know, the only cameras that have been used today to do uh, what has just been presented. The idea, of course, for the future, we'll be able to, uh, we're hoping to be able to port that software maybe elsewhere to help uh, other suppliers or other providers for the ADR technology. I hope that answers the question. <clears throat> Uh, also, people are asking me what the ideal height uh, for the ADR camera is to work at its most efficient level. Um, I would say from experience and from everything I've seen in the field that um, the height is approximately between 5, 5.5, uh, 6.5 meters on a gantry. I think that the, the camera position is of prime importance, although I've seen that we can detect ADR plates from the side of the road on one, on one lane. I believe that if we want to have a high performing product, then we need to be overhead and we need to be uh, facing that truck, if possible, on a gantry or maybe on the front of the tunnel or maybe on a bridge. But uh, I would be looking to be over and above uh, the traffic to try and get the best performance possible. And then uh, another question is, um, is the ADR module a separate module in the MQ platform? Yeah, in the MQ platform is being built globally and designed to meet most requirements in the market for traffic management. But of course, um, it can be dedicated and adapted to the client and um, and only you, who could only use the ADR module and maybe the query module and maybe want to add the blacklist, the blacklist management uh, if possible. But yeah, it can be limited. You don't need to subscribe to all the options. Yeah. Um, and then another question is, uh, what kind of uh, true measured performance levels do you have with uh, such a system currently? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, we've been doing a lot of testing, uh, and within the last uh, two months, we are now uh, we now have performance levels uh, that are the equivalent of the ANPR reading, which is I would say superior to ninety five percent. I think we still have some work to do on the empty orange plates, but uh, I see that we are very close to the ANPR reading levels, which we hoped we would achieve anyway. Okay. Um, I think we have uh, went through all the questions. Um, we would like to thank you all for your presence uh, once again. Uh, we, we have noticed uh, first time registrants, uh, but also recurrent registrants, uh, which makes us very happy because it means that uh, we are definitely doing something that is relevant uh, to our community. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, you can um, contact us. Uh, let me go to the next slide uh, through these uh, contact information, uh, as you can see below. Uh, and last but not least, uh, a link will, will also be shared to you guys uh, if you're interested in re-watching uh, any of our recorded webinars. So thanks a lot, and we hope to see you in our next webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.